Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray in Made for Each Other. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. To most playwrights, a love story ends at the altar and leaves the rest of us wondering whether they really lived happily ever after. But anyone who's ever been to the altar knows that their life story just begins there. So in our play tonight, made for each other, we skip the courtship and tell the best part of the story, the married life of two average, healthy young Americans. And since our boy and girl are so typically American, their story is more than a love story. It's the drama of America in our own day, because the home of Johnny and Jane Mason, multiplied some millions of times, is America. That's why this play, Made for Each Other, is made to order for the Lux Radio Theater, an institution supported by women like Jane, who've given Lux Toilet Soap an important place in their homes. They know the value in this modern world of looking their best and the value of Lux Toilet Soap in helping them do it. To bring you this average young married couple, we selected two players who are certainly far above average in talent, Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray. Miss Lombard as Jane as the same part she played in the David O. Selznick picture, Made for Each Other, which was written by Joe Swelling. Fred McMurray is currently being applauded for a fine job in Paramount's Remember the Night. When we decided to produce tonight's play, both our stars were absent from Hollywood on well-deserved vacations. Fred on a hunting trip in the mountains of California, and Carol on a hunting trip in the mountains of Mexico. <laughs> and it took a lot of hunting on our part to find these wild spots but no time at all to lure our stars back from their vacations when they heard what the play was. And that brings us right up to this moment, and a play which begins where most plays end, a story of two people who have the chance to live happily ever after. We raise the curtain on the first act of Made for Each Other, starring Carol Lombard as Jane and Fred McMurray as Johnny. Spring in New York. Welcome sunshine warming the bright streets. A gentle breeze carrying with it a hint of blossoms in the park. And above all this, high in a skyscraper, the law offices of Doolittle, Messerschmitt, Doolittle, and Hutch. Dignity is the keynote of this impressive suite. But on the spring morning in question, dignity is lacking in the extreme. For the whole office force is gathered expectantly at the door. Each person well supplied with rice and old shoes. Suddenly the door swings open and the office boy dashes in. Hey, he's coming, Johnny Mason. Oh, did you see him? Where is he? He's on the elevator. Get the shoes ready. Where's my rice? Quiet. Shh. Here he comes. Hello, kids. Hey, what's everybody looking at? A fine trick you pulled in us, Johnny Mason. What are you talking about? Oh, 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 thanks. Thanks. Hey, wait a second, will you? I just got a guy get married. It isn't unusual, is it? Oh, it is. Oh, Mason! Uh, it's just because a guy happens to get married. Mason! Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Doolittle. Come into my office. Uh, yes, sir. I just on my way Never in. Never mind. This... Come in and close the door. Yes, sir. Well, Mason, what was all that racket out there? Well, they uh, somehow found out that while I was away in Did Boston, you get the I... deposition in the case of Higgins against Higgins? Yes, sir. Here it is. Let me see it. Well, go on, go on. What about that uproar? Well, uh, after I got the deposition, I had a what few hours What kind of spare, nonsense but... is this? This isn't the deposition in the case of Higgins and Higgins. Oh, isn't it? No. It says, to the party of the first part, I love you, signed party of the second part. Oh, that, I, uh, it's a, it's a note from Jane. She's, uh, my wife. Your, your wife? Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to tell you. I, I got married. Oh, you got married. Yeah, it all happened just as suddenly as that. I, uh, was strolling up in the common in Boston, and she had a cinder in her eye. Uh, a what? A cinder, a piece of, uh, you know, cinder, and... And she stopped, and I stopped, and that's when I took the cinder out of her eye. And that's when you married? Yeah, that's right. Oh, not immediately, of course. I uh, had to get the deposition first. That took two days. I see. 
Pretty quick, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. I imagine my daughter Eunice will be rather surprised at this. Oh, well, you won't be any more surprised than I was. Hmm. Well, don't stand there. Get the deposition. Uh, Judge Doolittle, uh, when people get married, they uh, usually go on a honeymoon. I didn't. I don't approve of honeymoons. They're a waste of time. Uh-huh. Well, uh, you know how women are, Judge. And, well, uh, if it wouldn't inconvenience you, I'd like to have one uh, just for Jane. Well, how about Higgins against Higgins? It'll inconvenience them, won't it? Oh, no, sir. That is, if you'll pardon me, I've arranged a continuance with opposing counsel. A continuance, eh? A sheer waste of time, Mason. All right, all right. Take a week. A week? I, uh, well, I'm afraid I couldn't very well make it in a week. You see, we're going to Bermuda. Take ten days, then. Now, that deposition will have well, to be... Well, you see, Judge, we were expecting to be gone for about a month. A month? Four weeks? Uh, yes, sir. Jane's waiting in the car for me now, and I told her we could probably stay down in Bermuda now, for a Now, 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 see here, Mason. Higgins against Higgins is much more important than Bermuda. You'll see all that's necessary in ten days. It's a very small island. Oh, but ten days, Judge Doolittle? Ten days. Yes, sir. Thanks. Well, go on. Go on, Johnny. What did the boss say when you told him? Oh, he, he was swell, Jane. I... Showed him your picture? And... Oh, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, Johnny. Uh, sure, he was marvelous. I couldn't congratulate me enough. Oh, then you didn't have any trouble about the month off? Uh, well, no. Not what you'd call trouble. The uh, only thing is... Well, I, go on. Well, I didn't get exactly a month. Well, how much did you get? Well, as I say, I didn't get the full month. Of course, if I'd insisted... Well, I know, darling, but how much? Well, I compromised on ten days. Ten days? Yeah, Darling. But I've got it all planned. You see, it takes the boat two days to get there and two days back. That's a whole six days we'll have. A whole six days. Oh, I know, darling, but old Granite Puss doesn't believe in honeymoons. And it's not so awful bad. After all, fellas have gone around the whole world in less than that. And a little help with my mother. What'll help with your mother? We won't have to leave her for so, such a long time. No, when you phoned her this morning, what did she say? Oh, she, she was fine. Fine. She asked a million questions about me, I suppose. Well... Not exactly. She... Well, you told her about me, of course, and getting married and all. Well, I didn't work things out too suddenly. I just sort of broke the ice. Oh, Johnny, how much ice did you break? I uh, just told her that while I was in Boston, I ran into several people. And... Well, didn't you tell her about me at all? I kind of thought it'd be fun to surprise her. You know, a surprise. Well, Johnny, I think you'd better see your mother by yourself. Oh, no, 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 Jane. I should say not. It'll be a breeze. I, I've got the whole thing planned. Move by move. I, now, look. We'll just start at the beginning, and I'll tell her that while I was strolling on the common, I met you. Oh, Mother, after I met Jane, and after I got the cinder out of her eye, we we walked along together. How interesting, I'm sure. Uh, would you have some more tea, Miss... Uh, I didn't catch your last name. Well, I don't think Johnny told you. I will have some tea, thanks. It's delicious. Uh, yes, John, go on, dear. And uh, then we kept walking some more. And... Uh, then we went over and had a bite to eat. Yes, go on. Uh, we had a bite. And I, uh, then I told her I was crazy about her. What? What did you say? Well, we were as just as surprised as you are, Mrs. Mason. It was love right after the cinder came out. Oh, dear. You, you know, Miss, uh... My name is Jane. Oh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane. Uh, John, so young and impulsive. <laughs> but, Mother, this is different. Uh, Jane, my dear, are you visiting relatives here in New York? Well, yes. No, not exactly. I I came down with Johnny. From Boston? Together last night? Well, you see, Mother, we thought that since we're engaged... Engaged? Well, I know that must be upsetting to you, Mrs. Mason. It was But sudden. what did your family say about it? Well, I have no family. I was going to night school, taking a course in journalism. But she gave it all up when she met me. I, I'm a sort of postgraduate course. <laughs> my dear, if you have any opportunity for a career in journalism, then by all means follow it through. But don't you think marriage is a bit of a career by itself? Oh, indeed, but one should be prepared for it. One shouldn't rush into it pell-mell. There are too many things to learn. Oh, Jane will learn them after we're married. Don't you worry, Mother. I hope and pray that day won't come for many years. You don't think we should get married? Emphatically not. Now, that isn't to say, please understand, that I have anything against Jane. I'm sure she's a... Lovely girl. Oh, I'm glad you... I'm glad of that because, uh, Well, you see, you asked if she was visiting relatives. Yes. As a matter of fact, she's visiting one right now. We, uh... Mother, we... Uh, We're married, Mrs. Mason. Oh! oh, gosh, Mother, people get married sooner or later and go on honeymoons, and when we come back, we'll find a new apartment, and you'll stay with us. Jane insists on that, and we'll have a little family A that family! Oh! oh, Mother! Oh, Johnny, Johnny, the smelling salt, she's fainted. <laughs> Oh, the shore that's going ashore. 
well. It's time for me to leave, I suppose. Goodbye, my son. Goodbye, Mother. Gosh, don't look so sad. We'll be home in ten days. I know. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Nixon. Uh, don't let him have too many strawberries. He gets rashes, you know. Oh, and when he gets to Bermuda, see that he wears a hat in the sun. I will. Oh, gee, Mother. He almost had a sunstroke once. Oh, that was 14 years ago. I'm over it now. And if he gets seasick, don't forget the pills I gave you for him. And... Oh, and take care of yourself, too. Oh, I will. Goodbye, Mrs. Nixon. <laughs> Come on, we'll wave to you from the rail. No, no. You stay here. I couldn't stand to see the boat leave with you on it, John. Goodbye. So long, Mother. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care of him. He's my only son. I will. Funny things, Mother. Well, let's go in the stateroom, huh? Oh, come on, let's unpack. We've got lots to do, darling. No, no. Let's just sit here and think. You know, this is the first time in my life I've been away from America. Me too, and it's, it's just beautiful, Johnny. Yeah. Jane. What? Remember when I took that cinder out of your eye in Boston? <laughs> How could I forget it? You know, I threw it away. I should have kept that cinder and put it in a locket or something. Why, if it weren't for that cinder, we, we, maybe we'd never have met. Oh, Johnny, don't say that. We had to meet. That's right, I guess. So if it hadn't been for that cinder... Oh, Johnny, isn't everything just beautiful? Yeah. Hey, that's us. We'll pull out pretty soon. Bon voyage, darling. Bon voyage, sweetheart. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. Who's that? I don't know. Go see. Come in. Oh, hello, Mason. Yeah, I just caught you in time. Oh, Carter, it's nice of you to come down. Uh, uh, meet Mrs. Mason, my wife. Uh, Jane, this is Carter from the office. How do you do? Happy to know you. Well, Carter, good thing I got here, Mason. You got just five minutes. Five minutes for what? Get off the boat. Get off the boat? Get off... <laughs> don't mind him, dear. He's, he's got a funny sense of humor. Yeah, well, Doolittle hasn't. He sent me down here. He wants you back in the office right away. What are you talking about? Higgins against Higgins. Well, what about Higgins against Higgins? Higgins against Higgins goes on the calendar next week. Well, Johnny, they can't. Oh, no, no, Carter. You, you're mistaken. I got a continuance for a whole month. Yeah, you think you did. The other attorney didn't sign it. Judge Doolittle had the case reset for this week. Sent me down to get you off the boat. Johnny, they can't do that to you. Certainly not. Well... What does old Granis put think I am, a puppet? Some kind of a pawn. He can push around like, like a pawn? Yes. It's out of the question. It's preposterous. Is that what you want me to tell Judge Doolittle? Uh, yes. Oh, uh. now, Jane, wait. Uh, will you excuse us a moment, Carter? Certainly. But you'd better make up your mind in a hurry. That's telling them, Johnny. Uh, sure, but, Jane, I, I mustn't be too impulsive like Mother says. Uh, Higgins against Higgins is my most important case. All right, so it's important, but it isn't as important as our honeymoon. Oh, no, certainly not, but only I don't want to lose my head. You see, in a way, darling, a lawyer is a little like a, a doctor or a lawyer or a soldier. I mean, see? You're not giving in to them. Well, not exactly, but well, maybe we can go on our honeymoon when the case is settled. We'll turn in our tickets. And... Oh, no, Johnny. Oh, but Judge Doolittle said... I hate Judge Doolittle. Oh, shh, and I hate Higgins against Higgins. Oh, but I can't go And on that to... nasty little man out there, Carter, I hate him. Oh, I know. I'll bet you hate me, too. No, oh, Johnny, it would have been so beautiful. <laughs> Anybody home? Johnny, Johnny, where have you been? I've been worried to death. I got tied up in court. I didn't know whether I'd make it home for the party or not. Well, I'm glad you got here. Did you bring the wine for dinner? Yeah, see, old Granite Puss's favorite brand. Well, hurry. Dinner's at eight, and they'll be here any minute. Yeah, all I've got to do is shave and change my shirt. All right, but hurry. I'm almost ready. Okay, sweetheart. I'm always. Oh, don't use the guest towels. Yours is on the second rack. Okay. How's it been going? No, everything's just lovely. An ultimatum for Manny. This one's final. She's quitting tonight. Tonight? Oh, it's all right. She'll see us through dinner. I don't see why you have so much trouble with servants. <laughs> I'd like to change places with you someday. It's a trial to get a dinner with a maid like Annie. Hey, what are we going to have for dinner? Roast beef. Roast beef, huh? Dolly, Doolittle's delight. <laughs> say, that was certainly a brilliant idea of yours, inviting Eunice Doolittle at the last minute. She's the judge's daughter, isn't she? She and the judge are like corned beef and cabbage. Always come together. Yeah, and that impossible twerp Carter. I suppose you had to ask him, too. Uh, Eunice had some sort of a date with him. What could I do? I don't know how I'm going to stand him. I've always had an idea it had something to do with canceling our honeymoon. Yeah. It's going to be different when my name moves up in the door. Law firm of Doolittle, Messerschmitt, Doolittle, Hutch, and Mason. Oh, Johnny, really? Yeah, it's practically up there now. I won the appeal in the Higgins against Higgins. It's a sure thing now. Oh, the thing you wanted for years. Oh, you're yeah. marvelous, darling. Hey, gangway, where's my tie? Right there. Gosh, you're dressed. Yes, except for this. Hook me up, darling. Oh, where? Those hooks in the back. Oh. Yeah, pretty nice neck you've got there. As nice as Eunice Doolittle's? <laughs> what do I know about Eunice Doolittle's neck? I never even noticed she had one. Yeah. Is that all the hooks? Oh, thanks, dear. I run out and see how Annie's doing in the kitchen. Okay. And hurry, Johnny. 
Gee, your guests are here, my dear. Uh, well, good evening, Judge Doolittle. Well, well, good evening, Mrs. Mason. Good evening. This is my daughter, Eunice. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Mason? Uh, you know Mr. Carter? Uh, yes, we've met. How do you do? Good evening, Mrs. Mason. Glad to see you again. Uh, we're a little early, I'm afraid. Oh, not at all, Miss Doolittle. It's just eight, and Johnny should... Jane! Yes, dear? You know, I was just thinking, I bet old Grand Puss will be lady. Oh. Good evening, Mason. I, uh, didn't know. Uh, I, I've got great news for you, Judge. We, we've got roast beef for dinner. Miss Mason, dinner's ready. Do you want it now when you eat it cold? <laughs> well, shall we sit down? Annie, Annie, you may sit the dessert, please. Well, that's what I'm doing, ain't I? But, Annie, this isn't the ice cream. Well, maybe it don't look like it, but that's just what it is. But what happened to it? Somebody defrosted the icebox. Just a little accident, Judge. Quite all right. Oh, it looks just delicious, Mrs. Mason. Mm. Annie, you may serve the wafers. What wafers? Crackers. Mmm, crackers. <laughs> well, I couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> Judge Doolittle, Johnny tells me that you've won the appeal in the Higgins against Higgins case. Yes, yes, at last. Well, is it true, Judge Doolittle, that something's going to happen in the firm next week? Yes, we're considering a blood transfusion. Uh, metaphorically, of course. Getting new blood in the firm, as it were. We're appointing a junior partner. And Daddy's consulted with me. Yes. It's quite a job to pick the right man. I shouldn't think so. Surely if it's a question of merit, <clears> John... <throat> yes. As a rule, I always trust to my own judgment. But when it comes to picking men, there's nothing like a woman's intuition. Uh -huh. That's why Daddy consulted me. Mm -hmm. And the new partner will be... Beginning next Monday, the new name of the firm will be Doolittle. I, of course, will head it as I have for 25 years. And very capably. Uh, Messer Schmidt. Uh, naturally. Doolittle, my brother. Do hurry, Daddy. Hutch. And? And Carter. Daddy. Not my son. Oh, Congratulations, you? Carter. Thank you, Judge Doolittle. Thank all right, you, nothing Carter. you didn't deserve, I'm sure. It's well, all right. <laughs> Carter, uh, congratulations. Uh, thanks. It's wonderful. I always knew you had it in you. I'd uh, like to propose a toast to the new partner. Toast. Only uh, we seem to have run out of wine. <laughs> Will you give me the platter, Mother? Just hand it over. Be careful, son. Don't cut your hand on those knives. Here, might as well wash this, Johnny. Somebody left their peas. It was Judge Doolittle. The, the dessert dishes are on the sideboard. I'll go get them. John. Maybe sure sticks. I didn't want to say anything. You know I've never interfered. But you must admit now. Yeah? You must admit now that if you hadn't rushed into this marriage, there would have been no question about your getting the partnership. What do you mean, Mother? If you'd have married Eunice Doolittle, and you could have, I know, you would have been in Mr. Carter's place. Yeah, look, Mother, Jane has more on her little finger than Eunice Doolittle ever will have. She lives to be 900. Son, Jane... And, Mother, there's something else. I, I don't like to mention it, but it isn't any too easy for Jane and all of us living together like this. I, we should remember that and try to understand. But I only had your good in mind when I mentioned the partnership. My partnership with Jane is all the partnership I need. Whether Doolittle or Carter... Me too, Johnny, that's... All I need. Must you eavesdrop? Oh, she wasn't, Mother. You're both siding against me. We're not either. No, Mother. Don't you see that Johnny and I have enough? We have each other. You don't understand. I don't understand. No, Mother, I don't think I've got all I can bear. Don't dad anymore. We're not trying to. The I dinner was the most humiliating experience of my life. Of course, it was for us, too. Not me. I don't care what they think. And I'll be blamed for it. That's all the consideration I ever get around here. Consideration? You don't need consideration. Jane. Jane, darling. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, Jolly. I didn't want to do that, but I, I guess it's just me, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I know, darling. Don't worry. It's going to be all right someday. I, I'll have a partnership of my own, my own office, my own practice, and my own firm. Sure, that's right. And, you know, I know a swell name for it. Mason and Mason. Yeah, Mason and... Huh? Father and son? Well, doctors can be wrong, you know, but our doctor thinks there'll be another lawyer in the family pretty soon. Jane, you, you mean you... A, a, a baby lawyer? Yes. I want him just like you. Oh, Jane. Jane, well, congratulations, honey. <laughs> yes. 
In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray, will return in Act Two of Made for Each Other. When a famous and lovely screen star talks about beauty care, women everywhere listen with attention. You might almost say that beauty is the business of a screen star. Just think of the thousands and thousands of pairs of eyes that take in every detail of her appearance and approve or disapprove. Yes, screen stars must be alert every moment to see that they look their very best. And we know you're going to be interested in a beauty hint from that young charmer of the screen, Anne Sheridan. Here's what she says. I think there's nothing in the world more important to a woman's charm than smooth, soft skin. And that's why no matter how tired I am at bedtime, I wouldn't dream of neglecting my active lather facial with Lux soap. Have you ever tried an active lather facial or a quick beauty freshener during the day and as a regular bedtime beauty care? Anne Sheridan tells you how to do it. First, it's easy to work up a rich, creamy lather with Lux soap. Work it gently into your skin with upward strokes and little pats. Second, rinse thoroughly with warm water, then a dash of cool. And third, pat your face lightly to dry. Your skin feels softer and smoother. See how fresh it looks. Yes, Lux soap's active lather gives skin protection it needs for beauty. It leaves no trace of dust, dirt, or stale cosmetics to choke the pores, cause unattractive cosmetic skin, those unsightly little blemishes and coarsened pores that make any woman unhappy. You can use cosmetics all you like, but never forget your active lather facial. It's a wonderful way to protect your skin by helping to keep it soft, smooth, adorable. Buy three cakes of Lux toilet soap and try this care for 30 days. And at the end of that time, see if you don't feel well repaid. You want to make the most of your looks, don't you? Take a tip from the lovely screen stars, from attractive Anne Sheridan. Remember, nine out of ten famous Hollywood screen stars use Lux toilet soap, this soap with active lather. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Made for Each Other, starring Carol Lombard as Jane and Fred McMurray as Johnny. The standard witticism of maternity nurses throughout the world is the doubtfully humorous remark, we've never lost a father yet. But Johnny Mason, like many fathers before him, is not so easily convinced. His knees are shaking violently, his face contorted with terror as he treads the well-trod hallway of the hospital, awaiting the advent of his future law partner. Nobody looks at him. Nobody speaks to him. Johnny Mason is a lone and lonely man in a woman's world. Hey, nurse. N nurse, will you speak to me, please? Yes, what is it? Look, uh, tell me, how about it? Huh? How about what? How about what? About the baby. My baby. Is it... Is she... Is he here? Oh, you want to know if he's arrived yet? Well, if you don't mind, yes. Well, it won't be long. And remember, we've never lost a father yet. <laughs> Just take it easy. Take it easy? With this kind of service? <sighs> Nurse! Hey, nurse, is that him? Is that my baby? No, and don't you come another step closer. Yeah, but if it's mine... Please, this is not your baby. Oh, all right. But when's my baby now, coming? Now, don't worry. We've never lost I father. know, I know, but you'd better be careful this time, that's all. You'll just have to be patient. Be patient? Have you ever been a father? I'll die on my feet if I... Hey, doctor! Is, is that... What about my baby? Sorry, young man. I'm not your doctor. Have I got a doctor? Why doesn't somebody tell me something? Why doesn't somebody speak to me? Mr. Mason. You won't Mr. even Mason. look at me, you fine thing. Please, are you Mr. Mason? Me? Oh, yes! What do, you, what do you want? I've been trying to... What's this? This is your baby, Mr. Mason. My baby? A girl? It's a boy. A boy. Well, Jane, how is... She's fine. Everything is fine. You'd better sit down, Mr. Mason. You're a little pale. Me? Oh, no, no. I'm fine. I never felt... Oh! Doctor! Doctor! Stretcher, please. We're having father trouble again. It's a touch of colic, I know. No, Mother, he's just hungry. I'm sorry, my dear, it's colic. He's cried for five minutes. Johnny, where's that bottle? Coming, dear. Here you are, fella. Here's the feed bag warm just right. Hey, look, he's smiling at me. That's gas. Oh, 
me that bottle, Joe, and, and then answer the door, will you, Johnny? Whoever it is, I'll tell him we're not here. There. There you are, baby. Well, at least he stopped crying. You see, he was hungry. If he was fed on time, he wouldn't cry. I know, Mother, but the bottle wasn't warm enough. Too bad he has to be fed on the bottle. Well, I haven't heard the baby complain yet. John never saw a bottle till he was six months old. Well, we just had the baby a little while, Mother. So far, he's done fine. I know, but I don't see what I you... do. not say anything. What's that, my dear? Say Nothing, Mother. Who was that, Johnny? Well, the mailman. Hey, what do you think? It's a present for the baby from old Granite Puss. Well, how thoughtful. I bet it's a summons. Yeah. Hey, look, it's a bank book. Well, the old darling, how much? Uh, ten bucks. Ten dollars? Well, I hope it doesn't plunge Doolittle into bankruptcy. I think it's very considerate of Judge Doolittle to think of the baby's future. Well, it isn't much, but gosh, it's a start. Why, of course. That's the proper spirit, John. It isn't that. Johnny, come in here, please, in the bedroom. Will you watch the baby, Mother? That's what I'm doing. He'd choke if it wasn't for me. Johnny. What's the matter? What's the idea? Johnny, how long are you going to stand for it? Stand for what? You don't know, do you? I mean, Judge Doolittle's contempt for you, his intense unappreciation of your work. But what's that got to do with the $10? Well, it isn't the $10. It's what it means. He holds you at just that much. Yeah, I suppose so. If it was $10 from anyone else in the world, I would be swell. I'd accept it in the proper spirit, but not from Doolittle. You do all the work in that office, and Doolittle knows it. Yeah, I know. I ought to do something about it. The bills are piling way up over my head, and Christmas is coming, and... Well, the income just doesn't match the outgo. I know it. Tell you that, do little take advantage of you. You deserve a raise. Why don't you tell him that? Oh, I'd lose my job. There's mother and you to think about now. But you won't lose your job. You're too valuable to the firm. If you if you left, I bet Doolittle would come crawling on his hands and knees begging you to come back. On his hands and knees? <laughs> you don't know old granite puss. Well, I know you. All you've got to do is speak up. Don't ask for your rights to man them. What are you, a man or a mouse? I'm a... Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you're not easy. Do you know what's the matter with you? You're too modest. You don't appreciate yourself. You're not having the things you should have. Well, neither are you. Remember when I got you that wedding ring? Later I was going to get you the big one with the diamonds. And then I was going to get you that mink coat. I want them, Johnny. Yeah, probably have to wait 300 years. No, I want the ring now, for a coat now, and I want a honeymoon in Bermuda. And an apartment large enough so the baby doesn't have to sleep in the dining room. You can get them for me, but first you've got to get what's coming to you. If I only knew how to go about it. I'll tell you how. You just walk into Doolittle's office and you say, Judge Doolittle, there's something I've got to say to you right now. Well, what'll he say? He'll say, sit down, Mason. What is it? And you'll say, Judge Doolittle, I've been working for you now for five years. I've given you all that's in me, every ounce. Yes, and then he'll... No, wait. He'll say, there's no doubt about it, Mason. I've never questioned your ability or your loyalty. I'll say. All right, Judge Doolittle, what are you going to do about it? Oh, I hate to think what'll happen then. Do you know what'll happen? He'll say, Mason, what do you expect me to do? Darling, just put it to him flatly. Say, I want more money, and I want to pay, be taken into the firm, and he'll say... I know what he'll say. No matter what he says, you say, uh, uh, either a raise in a junior partnership or accept my resignation effective immediately. Effective immediately. I'm going to do it. One of these days, I... <laughs> One of these days is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yeah, but how am I going to... Oh, go look, in... let's start at the beginning, darling. You walk into his office, you say, Judge Doolittle, I've got something to say to you right now. Say it. Judge Doolittle, I've got something to say to you right now. I either get a raise in a junior partnership. I either get a raise in a junior partnership. Or else you can accept my resignation. Or else you can accept my resignation. Effective immediately. Effective immediately. That's right. Effective immediately. Judge Doolittle, I've got something to say to you right now. Mason! Mason, what in the world are you doing? Oh, uh, me? I was just rehearsing. Rehearsing? Uh, yes, sir. It's very important, sir. Well, it's more important that you answer your buzzer. I've rung three times this morning. Come in here. Uh, sorry, I guess I must have been busy of rehearsing. Sit down, Mason, sit down. Uh, Judge Doolittle, I've got... I've been working. Just what I want to talk to you about. Sit down. Uh, yes, sir. You've been doing mighty good work lately, Mason. Well, thank you, Judge. I was just... You've been capable, dependable, loyal, right from the start. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Judge. But, Mason, these are extraordinary times for all of us. Yes, they are. They are, Some sir. of our uh, biggest clients are affected. Oh, yes? Yes. Most of them claim it's all they can do to stay in business. They do, huh? So they're cutting expenses right and left. And, uh, naturally, we're the first to feel it. So we have to do something about it. Judge Doolittle, there's something I've got to say. So the only way out, as I can see it, is to tighten our belts. I'm asking everyone to take a 25% cut in salary. But Judge Doolittle... Oh, it's a sacrifice, I know, but I'm taking my cut, too. 
These times we all have to put our shoulders to the wheel. Uh, shoulders to the wheel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad you understand, Mason. It warms my heart to see such a splendid spirit of cooperation in one of my men. Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, by the way, Mason, please answer your buzzer next time. <laughs> yes, sir. I will, sir. Johnny Mason, your wife's on the phone. My wife? Well, tell her I... Tell her I won't be home. Tell her we won't be home till late. Johnny. Johnny, is that you? Yes, it is. Johnny, it's Mason, the failure. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning. How do you feel, Johnny? Fine. I feel fine. What time is it? Four o'clock. Five o'clock. High noon. Well, it's just three, isn't it? If you know what time it is, why do you ask me? What difference does it make what time it is? I I feel fine. You'd better go to bed, Johnny. You have to tell me like like a child. Uh, Are you going to sleep? Sure, I'm going to sleep. You think you'll be comfortable? Certainly I'll be comfortable. You're sure you'll be comfortable? Sure, I'm sure I'll be comfortable. Well, don't you think you'd be more comfortable if you took your hat off? Oh, Oh, maybe. Can I help? I don't need any help. I feel fine. Well, what are you looking so funny about? Better go to sleep, dear. Better get in bed. Am I comfortable? How do I feel? You'd think I committed a crime. You'd think I was on the witness stand. Man comes home looking for a little peace and quiet, and what happens? I... Why didn't I phone you from the office? Why didn't I come home to dinner supper? A million questions fired at me. You ran into Doolittle this afternoon when he went for a walk with the baby. He was in the park. All right. Come on, let me have it. Tell me what you really think of me. Tell me I'm a failure, a weakling. Tell me what a rotten worm I am. Tell me... Oh, Jane. Oh, Johnny, you fool. What, what does it matter if you get a raise or a partnership or anything? Oh, Jane, I let you down. I'll always let you down. I'm I'm no good. Johnny, don't say that. It was my fault for interfering. I'll I'll never do it again, never. We don't need anything. We've got each other. You're all I have and all I want. Please, if you feel bad, I'll die. Jane. Oh, Johnny, look at me and tell me you don't feel bad. Jane, I don't feel bad. I I feel fine. (laughs) Honest, I do. Oh, Johnny, the next time you go out and get plastic, you, you better take me along with you or I'll, I'll get a divorce. If you do, you better get a good lawyer. Well, I've got a good lawyer. Johnny, will you close that window, please? You know I have a cold. Oh, sorry, Mother. I just wanted to hear the crowd. Looks like a big New Year's. Yes. For some folks. How's baby, Jane? Well, I just looked at him. He has the sniffles. All babies have sniffles this time of the year. <laughs> caught it from you, Mother. Me? That's simply ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I caught my cold from the baby. He's had sniffles all day. When I took his temperature... Well, that's when he caught your cold. He certainly didn't. He had no temperature. It's all right, Johnny. It's just the sniffles. I suppose I ought to stay in my room all day. Oh, now, Mother, that's silly. You don't have to do anything of the kind. Heaven knows I try to earn my room and board by being as helpful as I can. Oh, Mother, please, it's New Year's Eve. It's just like any other day as far as I'm concerned. You're both perfectly willing to leave me all alone to wait for the New Year, when perhaps it's the last New Year I'll ever see. Not that it matters, I suppose. Oh, I know I'm in the way. Gee whiz, Mother, why do you keep saying things like that? It's true. Ask Jane if it isn't. No, Mother, it isn't true, and you know it isn't. Look, Mother, Jane and I aren't going out anywhere. We're going to celebrate right here at home, just the three of us. How's that? It's fine. We've got a bottle of wine. We'll open it at midnight and have a grand time. There's nothing in the house to eat. Oh, that's all right. I'll run over to the delicatessen and get some bologna and stuff. Yes, and get plenty of mustard, Johnny. You know I can't eat those things before going to bed. I never did approve of Annie, but I certainly miss her cooking. That doesn't say much for mine, Mother. Oh, you'll learn, my dear. It takes time, of course. I won't say anything. I won't Things say are anything. different now. When I was married, all well-brought-up girls knew about cooking. Oh, Mother, please. Why, Jane, what is it? I can't cook. I can't keep house. I don't know how to bring up a baby. No, Jane, don't. Sure, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do. You've resented me from the first moment you saw me. You resented me because you wanted Johnny to marry Eunice Doolittle. Oh, dear, I never said anything like that. Well, you've hinted it often enough. I've done nothing of the sort. 
But they were engaged. Mother, I was never engaged to Eunice Doolittle. Not what you'd call engaged, perhaps. And even if I were, you shouldn't keep mentioning it to Jane all the time. I can't understand why she's so touchy about it. Touchy? That's why you hate me. Jane, stop it. Now, let her go on. She can say anything she likes. I know my place here. I'm only a guest, an unwelcome guest. Oh, please, what's the matter with you two? There's nothing the matter with me. I never interfere. It's her house. Please, Mother. It's not my house. Now, Jane, I please. I do the best I can to help. I'm a stranger around here. Everything I say is wrong and everything I do is wrong. Jane, just will you... because I happen to mention that John and Eunice do Oh, work. stop it. Stop it, both of you. Very well. I won't say another word. There. You see what you made me say to Mother. Well, you said it to me, too. Don't I count? Sure you do, Jane. Only Mother's an old lady. We won't have her with us very long. Why can't she get along with her? Well, why can't she get along with me? Because she hates me. You don't know how it is. You're at the office all day between taking care of the baby, the house, cooking and listening to her criticize everything I do. I can't stand it anymore. All right. Then you don't have to. Johnny, where are you going? I'm going out. Where, Johnny? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere so as long as I get away from all this wrangling. Well, wait a minute. Don't you want me to go with you? Well, can't you understand a man wants to be alone once in a while? Well, I'm sorry, Johnny. Really, I am. I, you don't have to apologize. Would you rather I didn't come with you? Well, all right, Johnny. I don't mind. You go along and have a good time. Uh, come on along if you really want to. You sure you don't mind? Certainly, I don't mind. We'll have a good time. You just wait and see. <laughs> More wine, sir? No. There's nothing the matter with it, sir. No, no, it's all right. Would you like some more salad, madam? No. A little ice cream for dessert, maybe? No. no, no, no. Very good. Johnny, what's happened to us? This isn't like last New Year's Eve. I don't know. What is it? I don't know. Johnny, didn't we always promise each other we'd never keep anything back? Yeah. Well, then why didn't you tell me? I've tried to, but it won't come out. What do you want to say? Well, maybe I played a dirty trick on you when I took that cinder out of your eye. Did you? You'd never have had to marry me if that hadn't happened. Well, don't say that, Johnny. All my life, when I've had anything to face, I'd run away from it. But I'm not going to run away from this. I want to face it. What have I done up to now? I've been a failure. Oh, Johnny, no. Yes, I have, Jana. A failure. I've, I've gotten nowhere at the office. I've gotten in debt. And now, now it looks like my marriage goes on the rocks. No, jo no, Johnny, we can get a hold of ourselves. It's been my fault, no, too. No, no, I've been the one that's made the mess of things. Everybody knows it. Why, even my own kid has to sleep in the dining room. I made a household grudge out oh, of Johnny, you. Johnny, I love being a household yeah, grudge. Yeah, I know, I know. You're tied down, Jane. You're tied to the house and the baby. Maybe we shouldn't have had him. Baby? Oh, Johnny, you're not sorry about him. Oh, I'm crazy about him. And about you, too. I'd die for either of you. That wouldn't work. I don't even carry life insurance. You see, your whole life's ahead of you. Ahead of us? Not as long as you're tied down to a worm who just can't make the grade. And I'd be lower than a worm if I held you to that kind of a contract. A marriage? Yes. Well, you ought to know all about contracts. Let's be sensible about, sensible about it, Jane. I'm no good for you. Maybe it's the other way around. You were doing fine till I came along. Well, what is it? Do you want a divorce? I... I'm trying to look at it sensibly, that's all, from your standpoint. Well, I, I never thought this would be our New Year's, but anyway, we finally got something to celebrate. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Guess we must be pretty intelligent people to come to a decision like this and be so sensible about it. Yeah, we must be. Everything didn't go wrong, though. We, we did get a baby. <laughs> Well, the New Year's here. I think I'll go call up the house and see how the baby is. There's a phone in the booth in the lobby. I'll go with you. No, no, I'll come right oh, but back. Jane, wait a minute. I'll... Jane, let me in. Let me in the booth, Jane. I want it. To... Jane, listen. Wait. Hello. Go on, Mother. Yes, yes, I'll come as fast as I can. Jane, what is it? At the house? Where? All right. What's happened, darling? Charlie. What's the matter? The baby. The ba the What's baby. the matter, Jane? They've taken him to the hospital. Something's happened. Don't oh, hurry, Charlie. Hurry. <laughs> In 
just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray back in Act Three of Made for Each Other. But right now, I'd like to tell you a little story about Joan Blondell, one of Hollywood's most lovable and charming stars. I watched Miss Blondell over at Columbia the other day. She was working hard, going through rehearsals, takes and retakes, scene after scene. She'd been at it since early morning, too. Well, I happened to see Joan Blondell again that day, quite late in the evening, dancing at the Trocadero. She was gay and lovely, and looked as dainty and fresh as a spring bouquet. Every woman should be interested in that, Mr. Ruick, because it's quite a trick to snap back after a hard day and feel and look the way Joan Blondell did that night. And every woman faces that same problem, how to be fresh and relaxed and charming when evening comes around, just as much as the screen stars do. Well, Sally, you know the way Joan Blondell solves that problem. I certainly do. Joan Blondell uses her complexion soap, Lux Toilet Soap, for a quick, refreshing bath. It helps her snap back after working hard all day and helps her look and feel fresh and dainty. Miss Blondell says, I'm delighted with my Lux Soap baths. Just try this beauty bath next time you're all tired out and have a date to keep. You'll find it picks you up in no time. And here's something else. Joan Blondell goes on to say, A Lux toilet soap bath is the best way I know to protect daintiness. Lux soap's active lather leaves skin really fresh and sweet perfumed with a delicate clinging fragrance you'll love. Famous screen stars and lovely women everywhere agree that their beauty baths with fragrant white Lux toilet soap are wonderfully refreshing. And they particularly like the fact that they can depend on these baths to protect daintiness, make them sure of skin that's sweet. You see, Lux Toilet Soap has rich, fluffy, active lather that cleanses thoroughly, removing perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt from your skin. Now, why don't you take Miss Blondell's advice? Use this fine complexion soap for your daily beauty bath, too. You'll feel refreshed, and you're sure to love this fragrant, luxurious way of protecting daintiness. Try it and see, won't you? We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain rises on Act Three of Made for Each Other. Only a few hours have passed, but to Johnny and Jane, these hours have been eternity. In the waiting room of the hospital, they sit close together, hardly trusting themselves to speak, while just down the hall, their baby fights for life with every breath. At last, the door opens and the doctor enters, his face grave. Dr. Healy. How is he, doctor? Well, Oh, uh, tell us, please. I'll tell you exactly what the microscope told me. Your baby has pneumonia, type 14. I'm afraid I can't give you much help. Oh, it's that bad? Yes. There's a new serum which has worked in cases of this sort, however. The hospital is trying to get it. Trying to get it? There's none in New York. We've called the laboratories in Salt Lake City for a supply to be sent by air as soon as possible. How soon will it be here? I wish I could say. We've just been advised that a storm is raging in that section. No pilot will make the trip tonight. Then we can't get the serum? I'm afraid not in time. However, I'm hoping, hoping. that we may be... That isn't enough. I'll find a pilot. Oh, Johnny, we've got to. We've got to. Hello. Hello, is this the Salt Lake Airport? Well, my name's Mason. I'm in New York City, and my baby... Oh, you know about it, huh? Well, is the serum at the airport? Well, when can you leave? Tomorrow. No, no, you've got to leave tonight. The baby needs it now. Oh, all right. Will they bring you, Johnny? He, he's talking to somebody else. Hello. What? Five thousand dollars. Sure, sure, I can get it. It'll be at the Newark airport waiting for you. Will you start right away? Well, try, will you? Okay. Johnny. I know, I know, but 
I'll get it. You stay here, Jane. If I gotta rob a bank, I'll get it. I'm coming through this time. Is this his room? Mr. Mason, you must leave. Doolittle, me. come on, wake up. Mr. Mason, please, he'll be furious. Doolittle, wake up. Eh? What? Who is this? It's Mason from the office. I've got to talk to you right now. I, I, you must be drunk. I'm not drunk. Look, I, Judge. Is this your way of celebrating the new year? Now, now you listen no, to me. No, you listen to me for a change. When you asked me to take a cut, I took it, didn't I? What? And I had to let the baby sleep in the dining room, and that's why he caught cold. Uh, well, what are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about my baby. He's got pneumonia, and I need $5,000. That's what it'll cost to get a serum out from Salt Lake. And you're going to let me have it. My baby's dying. Dying, do you hear that? Your, your baby? Well, why didn't you get in touch with me sooner? I, I'm terribly sorry, Mason. I don't need sympathy. I need the serum. Every second counts. All right, Mason. All right. All right. Now, now try to be calm. Simon, get my checkbook and a pen. Yes, sir. Oh, thanks, Judge. Thanks. <laughs> Salt Lake City, Airport Hatton speaking. Okay, put him on. Hey, Conway, the bug in New York wants me to fly a plane there. Ah, uh, tell him he's nuts. We couldn't get a ship off the ground out here. Yeah, and that ain't never... Hello? Hello, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mason. The serum's here in Salt Lake, but we... Well, why did it seem possible to take off? Well, what can I do? I know how you feel. I gotta take... Listen there. What can you do with a guy like that? Here, give me that phone. I'll tell him. Wait a second, Mr. Mason. Conway will talk to you. Now, look here, Mason. What do you think this is, a suicide club? You can't expect any guy in his right mind to fly a plane on a night like this. Tell him the you... weather's thick as soup. Yeah, yeah, I know, Mason. But a ship in a storm like this one wouldn't stand a chance of getting through. Now, look. Huh? What? He smoked. The guy's crying. Hey, now, wait a minute, buddy. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Take it easy. Hold on a minute. Hatton. Yeah. Hatton, will you let me borrow your plane? Are you crazy? Now, you ought to know how it is. You've got kids of your own. I'll give you half the money if you loan me the crate. Suppose you crack it up. Then you can keep the whole five. I won't need it. Okay, Conway, but you're nuts. Hello, hello, Mason. Mason, relax. I'll highball her into New York tomorrow. Has Johnny called yet? Yes, he's waiting at the airport. What did he say? Well, just the plane left Salt Lake. How long did he say it'll take for it to get here? Fourteen, fifteen hours. I don't remember. It'll be too late. Shall I get you a coat, dear? Oh, the doctor says he's going fast. Here, dear. Put my coat around your shoulders. My baby dies, so I want to die, too. Jane, dear... You mustn't feel that way. Oh, I can't help it. You mustn't let John know how you feel. He loves the baby, too. As much, almost, as he loves you. Oh, poor Johnny, he'll be so lonely if the baby... <laughs> he'll have you, Jane. And you'll have him. And you can't be lonely, either of you. As long as you have each other. What? You know when you're lonely. Really lonely. When you've no one to share things with. Not even a loss. Mother. That's when you're really lonely. Oh, Mother, I... I, I haven't understood you. You are lonely, aren't you? Oh, Mother, Mother. Rock Springs, Wyoming. Conway calling Rock Springs, Wyoming. Conway in a commercial NC-24 over Rock Springs. Relay this message to Newark. Blizzard increasing. Ship icing up. Making detour south toward Denver. Conway calling Denver. Emergency. I'm in a bad downdraft. Losing altitude. Visibility zero. Can't even see my wingtip. Relay Newark. Conway calling Denver. I'm in a bad downtrend. Denver calling. Can you hear me, Conway? Come in. Come in, Conway. Denver calling Conway. Denver, Colorado calling all stations to Newark. Stand by to try contact commercial NC24. Emergency. Lost contact with Conway in middle of message. 
Try contacting him and relay all messages to Newark. Denver. Have you... Have you heard anything more? I tried about an hour ago, Mr. Mason. I'll try Allentown again. They might have heard something. Well, hurry. Hurry, please. This... This waiting is terrible. Yeah. Newark, New Jersey, calling Allentown, Pennsylvania. Do you read me, Allentown? Come in, Newark. What's the latest dope on Conway and commercial NC24? Haven't heard a thing for eight hours. Did you check with Iowa City? About ten minutes ago. And they just checked with Omaha. No word of any kind? Not a thing's come through. Let me know right away if something does. Okay. That's it, Mr. Mason. Well, uh, do, do planes go this long unreported? Longer sometimes, Judge Doolittle. It's an everyday occurrence in weather like this. Of course. What? Well, maybe his short wave's out of condition. That happens. Yes. Yes, that's what I think, Johnny. Yeah. You can look at it this way. It stands to reason Conway got out of the low-pressure area when he passed the rocket. Why, 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 certainly it, it stands to reason. Yeah. Well, you've been swell, Judge Doolittle, and you too, Murphy, and all the operators and the superintendent. You've all been fine to stay here all these hours and trying to give me hope, but there's no use. I, I can't keep calling up the hospital and say, say to her, no news, no news. It isn't fair. So I guess I'll go to her. Thanks, Phyllis. Uh, Murphy. Yeah? There... There isn't a chance, is there? Judge, if Conway's still up in that crate, it's a miracle. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oh, Johnny, you've come. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Oh, Johnny, I don't know how. I've forgotten how to pray. Just ask him, darling. He'll know what you want. Oh, dear God, you know how much he means to Johnny and me. We've, we've only had him such a little while, and we want, we want to see him grow up to be a man. Oh, please, please help our little baby. He's so small, so helpless. He can't do anything for himself, and we can't seem to do anything for him. This is Conway from Salt Lake. I'm coming in, Newark. I'm coming in. Jane, Johnny, Jane, my dear. Mother, what is it? Dr. Healy, is Mrs. Mason. Is it, is it all over? No, my dear, it isn't all over. The baby's sleeping soundly, normally for the first time. Johnny, did they tell you the news? Conway got through with the serum. What? Judge Doolittle brought her to the hospital himself. Oh, Jane, Jane... Uh, the baby's going to get well. We administered the serum as soon as it arrived. He's picked up amazingly. He's, he's going to be well. Oh, Jane. <sighs> Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. Mason, come in, come in, sit down. Yes, sir. Mason, I want to congratulate you on the handling of the Higgins against Higgins case. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, but you see, our boat leaves in an Higgins hour. Higgins and Higgins are so pleased, they've decided on us to settle the second case, which they're filing tomorrow. A second case? Yes, and I'd like to have you try it, my boy. Oh, but Judge Doolittle, I can't. I've got reservations. We're sailing this afternoon. Jane and I are going on our honeymoon. Come outside a minute, Mason. Uh, J Judge Doolittle, Jane and I are due at the... 
King, what are you doing here at the office? Look, Johnny, I brought the baby down to show you uh, how... Follow me, both of you. Uh, all three of you. But, well, darling, why, why did you bring Johnny? We've got to be at the dock. Will you stop for a minute? I've got to still tell you something about the baby. Here we are. Come over here, Mason. Look. But what? At the door, look. Read it. On the door, my boy. Law offices of Doolittle, mm-hmm. Messersmith, mm-hmm. Doolittle, Hutch... Carter and Mason. Yes, I've given you a partnership, my boy. Oh, partnership, John. Oh, and incidentally, you'd better get down to the boat. There's some extra reservations waiting there for you. The bridal suite. Oh, well, gee, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the baby, I forgot. Johnny, we rushed down the minute it happened. Well, what happened? Well, is he, is he all right? Johnny, the baby can talk. Go on. Well, baby, they don't believe us. Come on, darling, we'll prove it. Oh, he can't talk, Jane. Yeah. He's too young. Now, show them, darling. Come on, dear, don't be afraid. Speak up now. Say, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Please, darling, say, Daddy. Uh, Gee, I thought you were kidding. It's always refreshing to have Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray in the Lux Radio Theater. And we salute them for another... Sincere performance as they return to the microphone now. Well, uh, playing an average American like Johnny Mason comes pretty easy to me, C.B. I, you see, I'm from Wisconsin. How do you feel about it, Carol? Well, I was born in Indiana. Doesn't that speak for itself? Yeah, it's a nice enough place, I guess. <laughs> of course, the most typical Americans come from Wisconsin. Okay, they... uh, uh, could I get in this Chamber of Commerce convention long <laughs> enough to put in a vote for North Carolina, <laughs> sir? <laughs> All right, I'll admit both uh, Indiana and North Carolina. I guess a typical American is pretty much the same anywhere. If his wife comes home in a funny hat, he worries until he sees another one does like it. Or if he's driving somewhere in an automobile, he won't stop and ask directions until he's good and lost. Uh (laughs) (laughs) That's when Mrs. America says, Are you sure you took the right turn back there, dear? Yes, but seriously, Mr. DeMille, I like this kind of play because the people in it are so real. They represent the best things in America. They give us sort of a collective national sanity when we need it most. Mm, The people who make democracy work. May their shadows never grow less. That's what we all hope. Uh, What play are you doing next week, C.B.? Well, Fred... Before we go on to next week, there's something I'd like to say about the product behind this program. It's just this. I've used Lux Soap myself as a complexion care for a good many years. And you can count me as one of your most satisfied Lux customers. Mm -hmm. And we'll count you as one of our most charming, Carol. Next Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater presents that versatile star of radio, stage, and screen, Rudy Valley. With Rudy, we'll have the lovely Virginia Bruce, and our play will be Swing High, Swing Low, adapted from the Paramount screen hit. It's the story of a singing entertainer and the girl whose love and loyalty helped him to fame. Rudy Valley, Virginia Bruce, Una Merkel, and Roscoe Carnes give us the ingredients of a sparkling evening Monday next. That sounds like standing room only at the loudspeaker. Good night, C.B. Good night, everyone. Hmm. Good night. Good night. That was an all-American performance. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Rudy Valley, Virginia Bruce, Una Merkel, and Roscoe Carnes in Swing High, Swing Low. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Verna Felton as Mrs. Mason, Lou Merrill as Judge Doolittle, Hal K. Dawson as Carter, Rosemary DeCamp as Eunice Doolittle, Edward Marr as Conway, Wheaton Chambers as Dr. Healy, John Fee as Murphy, Robert Gray as Hatton, Bernice Pilot as Annie, Mary Lansing and Marjorie McGregor as nurses, and Griff Barnett Howard McNair, and Jackie Morrison. Kara Lombard's current picture is RKO's Vigil in the Night. Fred McMurray is now co-starring on the screen with Barbara Stanwyck in the Paramount picture, Remember the Night. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. May we call your attention to the fact that this week has been proclaimed by the President of the United States as National Defense Week. The event is sponsored by the Reserve Officers Association of the United States, of which Mr. DeMille is a member and the public is invited to participate in local observances. Announcements will appear in your local newspapers. Your announcer has been Melville Roick, and this is the Columbia Broadcasting System.